Good evening and welcome to the January 28th, 2014 meeting of the Gaston County Board of Commissioners. My name is Tracy Felbeck. I serve as chairman of the board as well as commissioner for the Dallas Township. I'd like to welcome our viewers and thank Time Warner Cable and AT&T for making this possible for our citizens. For a television audience, I'd like to present to you your Gaston County Commissioners beginning on my right. Good evening, Chad Brown, Riverbend Township. Good evening, Mickey Price, South Point Township. Good evening, Joe Carpenter, Crowders Mountain Township. Tom Kigger, Gastonia Township. And Commissioner Fraley is joining us by phone. At this time, would you please stand for our invocation this evening, delivered by Commissioner Carpenter, followed by a Pledge of Allegiance, led by Commissioner Price. Will you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day in our life, the beautiful snow. We pray that our citizens will be cautious and we pray for everybody's safety as they travel. We ask thy blessing upon us as we meet tonight and may we be guided by your will. For it is in Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Would you join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our first item tonight is to set the agenda as presented. Are there any items commissioners wish to pull or have questions about on the consent agenda? I move the adoption of the agenda as presented. Is there a second? second? This time Commissioner Carpenter moves Ooh. to adopt. I'll second if nobody has. Item you wish to pull, Commissioner Brown? I wanted to pull item N. <clears throat> Commissioner Brown pulls item N. Well, that's acceptable. N. Okay. Is that all, Commissioner Brown? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Carpenter makes a motion to approve the consent agenda with item N pulled to the non-consent agenda and Commissioner Price seconds that. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. At this time, uh, we'll have approval of the minutes. We will do all three of these together. The regular meeting of December the 10th, 2013, organizational meeting of December the 10th, 2013, and the closed session of January the 14th, 2014. Are there any changes or deletions commissioners would like to make? Move for approval. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Price, seconded by Commissioner Keeger. All in favor? Motion carries. At this time, citizen recognition. We have no one signed up for citizen recognition. So this will move us to the non-consent agenda. <coughs> Consent. Correct. This will move us to consent agenda. A motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Price, seconded by Commissioner Brown. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner Price. Our next item is the non-consent agenda. We'll begin with item A. Are there any questions about item A? What I, what I basically did is I put A, B, and C under the non-consent agenda because these items will come out of fund balance. I'll make a motion to approve A. Motion made by Commissioner Keeger to approve item number A under consent agenda, seconded by Commissioner Brown. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Our second item is gems. Are there any discussions? Uh, well, I'll, I'll go ahead and make the motion for gems. Second. Second by Commissioner Keeger. Is there any discussion? 
With no discussion? Ooh. All in favor? Ooh. Okay. Mr. Chairman, back on the uh, page 94 of your uh, agenda, goes back down to we had asked for the breakdown for the other services and the equipment and furniture. Did you get that, Mark? Yes, sir. Thank you. Hold on. Could you clarify the question, Commissioner Brown? Trying to find out what all is entailed in other services that would equal out to roughly $5,500 worth of differences, and the other one was $94,000 worth of, for equipment and furniture. And I had asked today to, uh, for Mr. Mathis to get a breakdown of that so we could look into that. Okay. Okay. Um, under equipment and furniture, well, first let's do uh, other services. We had um, originally proposed $40,100. That included um, more funds for pre employment testing and FISDAP testing, which is clinical skills, uh, clinical knowledge and skills tests. And we had also asked for some money to. Um, do uh, leadership LPQ training with uh, multiple choice, Miss Melinda, Dr. Melinda Lowry, and uh, what's left in there is a reduced amount for pre-employment testing and FISDAP testing. The uh, other training and the remainder of that was removed. And then on equipment and furniture, we originally proposed. One fifty four hundred fifty four thousand eight hundred ninety four dollars. Um, what's left in there is eighty one thousand three thirteen for gateways, um, nine thousand for replacement computers, and forty four hundred fifty nine dollars for uh, station equipment for our Cherryville station. What was removed was other station equipment, a replacement uh, keypad, narcotics. Uh, safe for our station one some training equipment a new ID card maker 14 scoop stretchers for the ambulances and 12 stair chairs for the ambulances thank you mr. chairman are there any, any other discussions okay I think Commissioner Keeger made the motion and I made the motion Commissioner Keeger seconded agenda item B all in favor Motion carries. Under item C, under non consent, I also make the motion. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Carpenter. Any discussion? All in favor? It carries unanimously. Our next item is item pulled from the consent agenda in Commissioner Brown. Thank you once again, Mr. Chairman. Back over to uh, that item of discussion, I know we had that last year at length with uh, the budget. Are we going to, I guess it, it, as it comes up, you know, every year we always get it as just as a item on the agenda. Are we going to look into it again? Or I know we do it on, I don't know if Ray's here, that's two-year cycles, correct? Two-year cycle. Uh, that we do the same spec every year for two years? I don't know how that would. Is, is Ray here? No, I don't know how it We need him. Thank you. We'll pause for just a second for Mr. Maxwell to get here. Mr. Chairman, I think the manager had something to say. Mr. Mathers? Uh, it is indeed a, a two-year spec that uh, we're operating on. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Mr. Brown? Good evening. Mr. Brown? Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Uh, the, each year, our, we're on a two-year spec cycle, correct, for what we buy as far as the specs for each car, truck, uh, any automobile that we purchase through the county? We typically redo those specs every year for our, for our common vehicles like um, um, building inspections trucks or social services vehicles. They don't, the, the specs don't typically change a lot from year to year, but there may be, for instance, at social services this year, they may have a need for um, um, wagon type vehicles to, to transport um, 
children and supplies and things like that. So we do make some minor tweaks to those every year, um, but we're not on a set cycle. And all of those, I guess that's how we did it last year. Just because we approve it tonight, does that mean we go ahead and go with the purchasing and we can pull it out at the budget time? Or what we do tonight is sort of binding until we get there? The vehicles that you're approving tonight are the ones that were approved for replacement in FY14's budget. We are in the process now of preparing a list of vehicles to recommend for approval in FY15's budget that you will review during the budget process in a couple months. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mack. With any further discussion, I'll make the motion to approve a bid to approve the bid to award uh, for the purchase of vehicles item N. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Carpenter. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Our next item is appointment lists, and I think Commissioner Price. We'll start with Commissioner Brown. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just have three all reappointments. I can make them all at one time. The Fire Advisory Board, Ted Hendricks, Planning Board, John Bailey, and the Transportation Advisory Board, Mr. Randy Watson. Second. Motion made by Commissioner Brown, seconded by Commissioner Keeger. All in favor? Motion carries. Commissioner Price. Thank you. Uh, I have two reappointments for myself. Uh, Environmental Review Advisory Board, Mr. Jason Cloniger, and to the Planning Board, Mr. Bill Farley. Motion made by Commissioner Price, seconded by Commissioner Brown. In discussion, all in favor? Motion carries. I also have uh, Commissioner Fraley ask me to do his. Mr. Commissioner Fraley has three reappointments requested to the Adult Care Home Community Advisory Committee. Jane Patrick, Economic Development Commission, Larry Summer, and the Environmental Review Advisory Board, Jeff Howe, Jr. We'll take that motion by Commissioner Fraley, seconded by Commissioner Brown. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. I do not have any vacant appointments. I will be making two for Commissioner Williams. Uh, one is, we'll do these together, one is for Brian Wyna for the Fire Advisory Board and Debbie Winley for the Travel and Tourism Advisory Board. Second. Motion made by myself, seconded by Commissioner Carpenter. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. Commissioner Carpenter. Uh, I have none at this time, but I will say that... Uh, on the Economic Development Commission, Neil Stiers has served for many, many years and served very well. And he indicated to me that he would uh, like to give that up for someone else to serve for a while. So I, I've already talked with someone, and as soon as we get that worked out, I'll have that appointment. But I don't have any for tonight. Thank you, Commissioner Carpenter. Commissioner uh, Keeger. Uh, yes. Uh, Tim Beam to the Workforce Development Board. You should have an application on it. Done. And uh, I haven't I had a chance uh, today to talk to Jerry Campbell, but I'm assuming that uh, he, he's, his position is vacant on the planning board, and I think he's more or less on a hiatus from serving, okay? Uh, unless there's some, unless he still wants to serve, uh, I'm going to uh, appoint Mr. Mo Alley to that board. Mo Alley, and I'll email you his contact information. Second. A L L Y. Motion made by Commissioner Keeger, seconded by Commissioner Price. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. There are no full board vacancies at this time. We are now under Commissioner's Committee Report. Commissioner Brown. None at this time, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Fraley. I'm here, and I have none, Mr. Chairman. Y'all done a really good job. I've enjoyed watching. Thank you. Commissioner Price. Thank you. Uh, I have uh, two committee reports. Uh, attended the Gas and Family Health Services. I guess the highlights of that meeting were we now have nine uh, enrollees in the Senior Total Living Care Center over at the uh, 
I don't know the name of that shopping center, but it's right where the Gazette is. But anyway, have nine approved enrollees, and and we're looking for nine or ten more that have already asked for approval for February. So that uh, very very lot of uh, walk-in traffic <laughs> inquiring about what it is, what it required to be there. Uh, we did get uh, one hundred forty-eight thousand dollars plopped into the account from the federal government to help with the Affordable Care Act enrollment to uh, actually hire some more uh, interested people that would go out and actually enroll people in the uh, Affordable Care Act. Didn't ask for the money, but just uh, it just came. Also wanted to uh, recommend that the uh, new consolidated DHHS and Gaston Family Health Services has been talking about uh, services and who can uh, provide services with the uh, largest reimbursement and uh, Mr. Dobbins and Mr. Spencer are working on child health discussions and the school link health center at the Bessemer City, Bessemer City Health Care Center. Uh, I'd also attended the DHSS board meeting. The uh, Highland Health Center is uh, almost complete in its uh, remodel for the uh, DHS uh, component to go in there. We will be having, I believe it'll be open and operational by March the 1st, and we will be having our one of our board meetings either next month or the month after at that. Uh, also, that is being paid for by Medicaid cost settlement money, and it was announced at our meeting that the uh, health department delivered 56% of all births in the county for 2013, and that would be 56% of 1,235. That's all. Thank you. Commissioner Price, Commissioner Carpenter. Well, I have about a 30-minute report, but due to the weather, I'm going to pass. <laughs> Commissioner uh, Keeger. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Uh, just real briefly, uh, well, most of us were at the EDC meeting. I'm just going to skip that. Uh, in your packet, you should find uh, Donna prepared copies from the U.S. Census Bureau on the population of all 100 counties, the breakdown of Gaston, Cleveland, and uh, Catawba County uh, by age group, uh, veterans, things like that. Just information from the Council on Aging. I thought it would be of use to every, everybody. And uh, that's it. Yeah, let me say something about that. Thank I read you, through that information. And it's really quite alarming if you look at the age groups. of We're going to have more seniors, which is, you know, in that age group for the next few years that's going to put another burden on all of the services that we provide. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can I add one other thing from the EDC meeting? <coughs> I feel it's uh, worth mentioning. Yes. Uh, it's with regards to uh, the future of transportation and roads in uh, our district. Uh, on February 6th, between 4 and 7 o'clock, Jackie McSwain will be hosting a uh, uh, it's not a public hearing. It's an information it's a, meeting. Yeah, it's going to be displays, things like that, just keep people in. there to talk. And uh, if any citizen has an interest in any particular road project, they can uh, email Jackie and contact me or any one of us to get her email address. Thank you, Commissioner mm -hmm. I have no committee report, but I would like to make a quick announcement. Um, after speaking with my family um, and my children and just a lot of discussion. Uh, I have decided to run again for re-election in 2014. Um, I firmly believe in public service. Uh, I love Gaston County. I enjoy it um, and look forward to running again and just wanted to let my fellow commissioners know and the public know that I will be running again in 2014. At this time, county managers report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll try to be brief. Uh, especially in consideration of the weather this evening. 
But I do have a couple of items I wanted to mention. Uh, the first is uh, our preparations for the planning retreat, which, as you know, is coming up on uh, February 15th. And, you know, we're obviously confronted with some pretty significant fiscal challenges. And, and so we're going to uh, take uh, somewhat of a new approach, or at least consider that, uh, which is priority-based budgeting. It's a process that has been endorsed by ICMA as well as the Government Finance Officers Association. So it's a tested and true method, which has worked in some jurisdictions that have faced problems similar to, to ours here in Gaston County. A um, couple of other, I guess, good news announcements. Uh, one is our workers' comp rates uh, are improved. We have, in fact, the lowest uh, DART rate, uh, which stands for days away and restricted time, that we've had in three years. So that has put us right around the national average, and of course, we hope uh, to do even better than that in the future. Uh, last Friday, I attended the the uh, kind of regional meeting of uh, city and county executives over in, in Charlotte, and that was uh, uh, pretty interesting. It was good to meet some of my colleagues from the various jurisdictions in the area, and also to recognize that they uh, share some of our problems. I thought it was particularly interesting to hear the comments from the Union County Executive uh, and with respect to uh, some of the issues that they've faced with their schools and, and other things that uh, that are rather alarming, I will say. Um, one other good announcement is that the, uh, the landfill uh, has been recognized by the EPA for, as a, well, for a community partner award uh, for their voluntary gas collection system. And as you probably know, the facility is absolutely state of the art. We have a lot to be proud of there, and it's really, it's gratifying, I guess, to get this kind of recognition from, from the EPA as well as being uh, recognized in a national publication recently as well. Um, just a reminder, the Gaston County Employee uh, of the Year Awards will be coming up very soon. That will be held on uh, February 7th and at, at noon at the Gaston County Police uh, Community Room. And then, of course, they will receive uh, commendation at the next uh, work session. And finally, uh, the Gaston County United Way campaign has, uh, has been completed uh, and $65,000 was collected. Uh, the high performing departments will be also recognized at the uh, upcoming work session. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mathers. County Attorney? No report, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Fieldbeck. Mr. Price. <coughs> uh, I assume you're about through. Yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Allman is here, uh, emergency management director. I didn't know if he had an update on any kind of emergency <laughs> situations that the public may need to know about or if there's any uh, emergency shelters that will be available tonight should people lose power. If Uh, briefly at this time, you know, of course, we still get a, you know, some flurries, uh, snow accumulation falling out there projected uh, 10, 11 by midnight tonight. That should end and be out. Of course, we are below freezing now and we'll remain below freezing throughout tonight into tomorrow morning. Monitoring some of the radio track, we do have a lot of wrecks occurring out there right now, you know, a lot on the back roads and secondary roads. and. Um, so again, you know, the caution there is if you don't have to be out driving, you know, we prefer you just stay at home. If you do have to get out and drive, you know, just respect the roads and get plenty of distance. Uh, as far as uh, shelters, right now we have none open or plan to open any, but Red Cross is on standby and ready to respond if and as needed. Uh, not only with the larger type shelters uh, that we would use at the public schools, but they also have a list of several churches that could be opened up quicker, smaller type thing. The problem ahead of time is identifying where the need may be because a lot of people may not have transportation to get from one place to the other. Duke Energy right now uh, are giving us projections of no major power issues tonight uh, because of the, the what we are getting is a very dry flake, not the heavy wet stuff like we normally get. 
So, you know, there may be some sporadic power outages here or there, but right now, you know, they're, they're not, they're ramping up more central eastern part of the state than they are here. So, you know, just be respectful and caution and get plenty of distance driving and uh, watch out for the other people. Thank, thank you, you Tommy. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but thank you. This concludes our meeting for tonight. Our next work session is February the 11th. Our next regular meeting is February the 25th at 6 p.m. at the Harley B. Gaston Jr. Public Forum Courthouse. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or comments, please telephone our clerk, Donna Buff, at 704-866-3196 and share them. This meeting is adjourned.